pattern video about the case. And if you want a very specific, if you want specific details about this case, I truly recommend Aaron Stoner's video or Stephanie Harlow's videos about this case. And I will post links in the description box. Um, if you want like a true deep dive of it, they go a, into specific details. So this is still like a mystery. This is still an unsolved case, but we kind of have an idea about what happened. But yet nothing has been, nothing's been set in stone. Steven was your average guy, but he wasn't your average young guy. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He always kept to himself. And that doesn't, okay, you know, the, a lot of young dudes usually go out and party and stuff like that. They sleep around and, but if you don't do that, that doesn't make you like any different. You can be straight edge, you know, you can not want to do those things. He was a Mormon. He preferred not to interact with any of those things. He preferred to not drink, not smoke, not even drink coffee. And he didn't even want to accept money from his parents. He was struggling financially so hard. And when his parents were like, here, let us help you. He was like, no, no, I can do this for myself. He ended up moving away. He ended up moving all the way to Utah. So he wasn't anywhere near his parents. He moved into this apartment and he had a roommate, um, Jordan, and he met his landlord. So his landlord, fast forward, we what we learned about him was that this guy was very sketchy. This guy owned like a shitload of guns. And when I say a shitload, I mean a shitload, like hundreds of guns. And I'm not talking about like the tiny pistols. I'm talking about like huge ass machine guns. Like big, big ass machine guns. Like hundreds of them. And not only that, but his, um, Steven's roommate always saw him with like a bag. And every time he would walk, he would hear like this rattle noise. And it was basically all these pills. And he knew that he was carrying drugs around him all the time. And he would smell marijuana all the time. And basically he knew that this guy was a drug dealer. And on top of that, there was a car, a very nice SUV, that turned out to be stolen. That he kept hidden in there. So... You know, we all know that this guy, the landlord, was up to no good. And it's a legend, you know. It's a legend. So, take take this information with a grain of salt. But, the roommate ends up moving out because him and the landlord ended up fighting and stuff like that. So, he moves out and then it's just Steven and stuff like that. So... What gets weird is that Steven ends up, like, making all these, like, weird, um, trips around the country and stuff like that. And then in this one particular trip, he travels from Utah all the way to Nevada. And, and there's actually footage, there's some surveillance footage of him parking his car. Well, you don't see that, but you do see him walk down the street. And that's the last time anybody ever saw him. You see him walking down the street, and then that's it. He's gone. And I don't believe that after he walked down that street, he just like, you know, poofed. Vanished into thin air. So what happened to Stephen Kulcher? Here comes the theory. The theory that a lot of people believe is that his landlord pretty much told him it's like look I know you're down on your rent I know you don't have money right now but you know what do me this favor take some money off the rent and stuff like that deliver this 
which most likely were drugs, you'll be good for this month. And Stephen, who was always dedicated for his work, you know, he said, okay, sure. Because he was always looking for a job, but nobody would ever hire him. So Stephen traveled all the way to Las Vegas, walked down that street, this package or this bag or whatever, probably ran into these people and then found out what he was doing was illegal. He was delivering drugs. And then perhaps like that, like, you know, like this isn't me, you know, that what I'm doing is wrong. And then these people thought like, okay, we got to get rid of this guy. He might rat us out. He might snitch on us. And then they kill them. People got like a Hulu or, you know, one of those trucks and stuff like that. And they were packing boxes and it looked like they were in a hurry. And then they drove away. And I, my theory is that those people, boxes might have had Steven's body parts in them and okay take that with a grain of salt that's just my theory that's just my theory sure because Steven's cell phone pinged the the last of Steven's cell phone pinged like right around the desert so what I think what happened was that Stephen was killed in that house, but he was dumped or and buried somewhere around the desert. And then nobody said anything about it and stuff like that. And that desert is huge. So it'd be like looking for like a needle in a haystack. And you know what? Sometimes I wonder, it's because Stephen's landlord kind of like associated with a cartel because it Kind of, um, cartels are usually, you know, they tend to assassinate people who they believe are snitches. Like, if you're a snitch, they will kill you. Yeah, they'll freaking kill you in a second and stuff like that. And you know what, maybe they thought, like, when Steve found out exactly what was going on, and because Steve was an American, he probably didn't know any better. They thought, you know what, this guy's got to go. You know, this guy might call the police on us and stuff like that. So maybe they killed him. He can get us in trouble. He can tell on us and stuff like that. You know, so they killed him. They got rid of his body. Because how is it that he walked down that street... And then he just never came back. I don't believe that he walked down there. And then he like just walked back. And he wasn't caught on surveillance camera just walking back. And then he just like walked away. Leaving his car. Still there. And then he just like walked to the desert. And didn't really like do anything. Like he was just what? He just wanted to wander around the desert. For no reason. And then he got lost and just died and you would think that we would today we would find the body or some skeletal remains but no there was foul play in all this steven was killed that day he was definitely killed and i'm not saying that maybe a cartel wasn't involved in all this and stuff like that but a drug gang was definitely involved in this and i think that um, Stephen Landlord was involved in all this. But, you know what? It's all alleged because nobody has been brought to court for this. Stephen hasn't gotten any justice. Stephen's body has never been found. But, you know what? Stephen's landlord owning a hun like around 100 guns, machine guns. Him having all these drugs him stealing cars and now like his tenant being missing it you know if you put two and two together you kind of have a clue about what happened to Steven he was killed and his body was disposed somewhere where, no, where nobody would find it and you know what maybe we'll never know the actual truth but I feel like the police should have done more to get justice for Steven.
That's basically my rant right there. Rest in peace, Steven, because I truly believe that he's no longer alive. All right, well, that's the video today. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. Try to subscribe because I'm trying to make a YouTube channel. And um, if my channel grows, I'm going to buy, like, the microphone. Try to make this a little more professional and stuff like that. All right.